All right, question, is inflation really dead? And we may talk about some other things as well. Let's bring in the great Sandra Smith, co-anchor of America Reports, and Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary, chairman of O'Leary Ventures, Shark Tank investor and author of Cold Hard Truth on Business, Money, and Life. Thanks to both of you for coming on. I'm going to have to give you a longer intro for me. I know. I was <laughs> Keep up with Kevin. We're going to do your show afterward. We're, uh, We're leaving a lot on the table. Yeah, it really is. I don't know. No. Thanks for having us. No, no, it's great to see you. <laughs> um, Sandra, I know you covered the um, uh, Jim Jordan hearings with Christopher Ray. You want to take a whack at it? What did you learn, if anything? First of all, Jim Jordan, top of your show, um, tons of energy, first of all, always yeah. brings it. Um, but, I mean, he's not wrong. I mean, there's more questions now following that hearing than mm -hmm. there are answers. And what a missed opportunity for Christopher Ray. When you've already got the American public extremely skeptical at what is going on over there, these questions about what happened with the Catholic memo uh, from the Rich uh, Richmond Field Office, mm -hmm. when Ray said he was aghast when he found out what was happening, well, okay, well, who was involved then? And why can't you talk about the ongoing investigation? Why can't you show us the unredacted That's it. That's uh, investigation it. That's of the it. memo from that? He what? blocked all those 1023s. They just blocked it, and then eventually they had to give in because of the subpoenas uh, and the possible contempt of Congress. But, yeah, it's right. so you're saying, when you say a missed opportunity, you're saying he could have come clean, been honest, and uh, let the public see yeah. that they're turning over a new leaf. But, of course, that never happens, does it? And talking about the findings of the uh, classified documents in the, in the ballroom, the bathroom, or whatever the line was about Trump, where Jim Jordan had to step in and say, in the garage, okay, mm -hmm. referencing the Biden documents, mm -hmm. Christopher went on, uh, Ray went on to say um, the idea that he's biased against conservatives, and this was on our show, is somewhat insane. Oh, really? Somewhat insane. Somewhat insane. Of course they're biased Digest against that. conservatives. Of course they are. That's what this is all about. That's what this is all about. Kevin O'Leary, I know you're not directly involved in any of this stuff. Uh, you were in politics for a bit in yes, Canada. Yes, I was. So I, 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 I'm a, I'm what do you make of this? Just I'm give a, me a quick take. What do you make of this whole story? I've never made money with politics. I've made lots of money with policy. Yeah. So I'm a policy wonk, and I was watching what I would call the hallmark of democracy. Mm. Shining transparency frying the, the i mean hearings are about frying someone like a chicken that's how it works and <laughs> but but it's it's a wonderful thing because there's not many democracies or places in the world where you see this transparency i found fascinating in today's because i watched all the testimony when they talked about scraping credit cards from bank of america right that was it's unbelievable. fascinating but the very fact that you can get that data out of them mm. and if you happen to be in washington that week your data got scraped and even asking, did you buy a weapon, or where did you shop, or where were you? And so it's important to disclose this information in the pursuit of transparency. So I say, shine the light, shine the light, shine the light, and let's go wherever it takes us. And I think this is fascinating stuff. Amen. Um, is inflation dead? I'm sure you covered today's CPI. How do you think I'm going to answer the only that? News, you're the only news channel host who actually does economics. I'm like, I, can't, I still can't unfair, wrap my way. mind around unfair. everybody cheering these prices coming down from inflated all-time highs that never had to happen in the first place. I don't know how we're in a world now where we're celebrating that. I'm going to celebrate it for the American consumer who's been living through this inflation crisis, 40-year high highs. Um, the grocery store prices are still extremely high. For those of you who actually walk into the grocery store, prices are still sky high. This is pain for the American people. It has not been fun. Um, the, the bright spot, I will say, because I don't want to be doom and gloom. I want the markets to go up. I want the American economy to prosper. Bright spot is wages are finally kind of coming up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if we can get wages to rise faster than the prices, then, then we're going to be before in a winning the, Before the Fed destroys the economy. This is, and this is the outstanding thing. Because you know the Fed it. doesn't like jobs. They don't like people working. The <laughs> Fed doesn't like a low unemployment rate because they think that causes high inflation. People working are very bad in the Fed. I mean, they have their tenured civil service He jobs. says the Fed's got it all wrong. They don't have to inflict all this economic pain on the American people just to cure the inflation well, crisis. Here's, here's what institutional investors Thank you. That was a good translation. You, got I, you know what? That's just what I, I was listen. trying to say. I listened to you, Larry. <laughs> Kevin, is inflation dead? What do you make of what Sandra was translating for you? No, I mean, no, she's <laughs> right. But here's the way the Fed looks at it now, and here's the way the market's looking at it over the next two weeks. The Fed will raise again 25 basis points mm -hmm. because they still look at only core. Mm -hmm. And core is not 
near where they want it to be yet. So, but what it has thrown a really interesting debate open to is the September hike. Mm -hmm. Because if you're a bull right now and you're managing money and you're thinking about positioning for the end of the year, you're saying to yourself, wait a second. The market's thinking 90% probability of July, 25 bips, mm -hmm. but now down to 20% for September. Now, is that, is our terminal rate going to end up at 575 in perpetuity? I can show you dozens of times in history in the American economy where terminal rates between 6 and 7 have been phenomenal economies, mm -hmm. and we're going to end up short of that. That means equities go higher at the back end of the There's year. There's nothing wrong with the 5% Fed funds rate. No, not at all, Larry. We had 5 to 6 throughout the... You the remember late, many of these periods. The 90s, for example, was a period when rates were even higher than this, and it was a fabulous bull market. The 80s, as inflation came down, rates were stubbornly high, and we had a fabulous bull market. Because, look... I, I actually, you know what? We're going to talk. You're going to make everybody rich in the next segment <laughs> by giving your investment strategy. Oh, yeah. So I don't want to steal anything from that. Sandra, can I just ask you, you interviewed today uh, Governor, former Governor Chris Christie. Mm. Um, thanks, thanks to him for coming on the show. I'm not happy with him because okay. all he does is attack Trump. Nothing wrong with attacking Trump, but he just attacks Trump because he attacks Trump. Mm. There's no policy to it. Well, you'll notice that when I pressed him on. Did you ask him about the George Washington Bridge fiasco when he tied up the bridge and so forth? I did he didn't it, like but I'm well aware. I'm well aware that many people say if this is a guy to fix the economy, he should be tested and pushed, uh, pushed on that. Uh, missed opportunity, going back to our original point. Um, Chris Christie. The one thing I did press him on was was the economy. Mm. If you if you put a Google search out there for Chris Christie and the economy right now, he hasn't made his pitch clear. I know on what he's going to do. I know. You know he did he did his, his his tenure as governor did start in 2010, right as we were sort of middle of the financial crisis, right. So he can point to a significant drop in the unemployment rate in his state. Uh, a lot of improvements happened, but a lot of it was because we were coming out of the financial crisis. But his, you know, he was touting growth, okay? Um, he was touting growth. He was talking about a lot of ways that he has, you know, he squashed tax hikes in his state and he's going to do the he same at the national I'll level. Give him, in his first term, I, I agree with that. He squashed tax hikes. I'm just miffed. I, I mean, I think his mission here is to just bomb Trump. And that's why you don't hear much. I don't positive. think he would deny that. I don't want to spend not a here. lot of time on it, but I know you interviewed him and I was just curious uh, what your view is. Um, Seems that's the strategy. Can we, the Bank of America, Kevin was talking about Bank of America. Yep. They just got busted, uh, fined a couple of hundred uh, million dollars mm -hmm. by the Office of the Controller of the Currency and the Consumer Financial Protection Board. Um, they got caught. They debanked certain accounts. A lot of people think they're conservative accounts. And um, also they created fake deposit accounts. And then there was these fees, this I guess. Is, is this a rogue bank, the Bank of America? I'll let you answer that question. I mean, this is just bad. Look, I don't, I have, uh, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, I would get rid of. In fact, we try to get rid of it. Yeah, where were they? But the Office of the Control <laughs> of the Currency, that's a serious regulator, and they were part of the finding. And, you know, creating fake, fake accounts, that's not good. No, that's not good. Well, we've yeah. seen that movie at, you know, Wells Fargo before, if you recall. But this is a rounding error. I mean, for Bank of America, it, and it's it, it's sort of a it's not even a scandal. It's sort of a contained fine. Mm. It hasn't seemed to hurt their reputation, but their name came up again today, as we just discussed in the FBI. Yes, Brian. Yes, and so that's not a good look for a bank. The problems with banking are in the in the regional banks now, not the big ones. Right, we'll pick it up later. Uh, we got to take care of Sandra Smith. Kevin's going <laughs> to come back. San, you can catch Sandra. Boy, finally we got the promo. Ah. You can catch Sandra along with her co-anchor John Roberts. On America Reports weekdays from 1 to 3 p.m. You Eastern come back soon, Larry. On Fox News. Stay right there. Stay.